November the 21st, 2021. This message I am going to dedicate to Bulgarian audience. I am going to dedicate, I do want to send uh, my best regards to Bulgaria, to Sofia, all through our communications, my communications with Bulgaria uh, were super, super largely distorted by the people I'm about to talk in this video message. You see here a uh, Bulgarian president, Mr. Mr. Rumen Radev. It was largely misconcepted. It was a big misconception and the people like this guy, like this Rumen Radev have made on behalf of Belgrade against me. Look at that. That's a Belgrade, that's a Serbia right there. Uh, that's a Serbia, that's a Bulgaria. Very important for me to mention this here is Turkey. Turkey has a border with a Bulgaria. And then you have up north here, you have uh, north east, you have Ukraine. And uh, then, of course, you have a Russia here. Uh, and, you know, this guy, this Roman Radev, was involved in MK Ultra and did his best on behalf of Belgrade, did his best on behalf of Moscow against me. I was brought there, and it was not okay in Sofia. Uh, he just took the stand uh, of Belgrade, Moscow. I was basically brought there for close, similar stuff like in Serbia. Similar, but not the same. But it was not pleasant. It is not okay. Too late, they realized that it was not okay. And I'm not resentful. Uh, I don't care about it. Really, I don't care. I don't have nothing against Bulgarians. I don't have a problem with the Bulgarians. I don't know whether they realize that I don't actually have a real problem with the Bulgaria. Once I tried to date a girl from Miami, Bulgarian girl, or was it due to my uh, co-worker over there at Part West Galleries, Boris of... Um, I can't actually in real life say anything bad about Bulgarian people, but what 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 went on under MK Ultra, it's not it's not exactly okay. But I can't build my future based on resentments against Bulgaria because Bulgaria is a very important. What I think should become definitely a partner if it's not. This is a very important Bulgarian Southern Slavic state. Uh, that I actually cannot afford to build some kind of grudge against, bitch about, but, you know, this kind of message, uh, this is just uh, a very, very bad, bad stuff. And I have to say about Mr. Ruman, I do have to, I do have to state that I didn't like I don't like him, I don't like his views on me, uh, because those views deeply sympathized with Belgrade, as I mentioned, with the Serbian Chetniks, as sympathized with the Moscow, um, and was not in it for anything other than making problems, uh, distorting my views in front of the Bulgarian people. So he came with the idea that Russia was the one that liberated Bulgaria, that I should be compliant, shut up in respect to Russia. Uh, he insisted with this kind of, it was like a, like a religious, sounded like a religious Russian supporter. But you know, when I think about it, this guy, now Russia did liberate it, Bulgaria from Ottoman Empire, that's basically from Turkey, but you know, I'm not sure. I don't actually think that his views are even in line with the Moscow. Uh, I think this guy does for someone else on the picture. This politic of European Union, this fictitious European Union, 
you know, became a, a union of, I'm going to, look at me, well-planned events ahead of crisis, okay? So they would have people that post the news, journalists, all kinds of stuff, manipulated, brainwashed. I don't think I'm the only person. I think it was other people before. I did not even want to do this kind of stuff, folks. I don't have ever anything to do with it. And they just count through the, in my case it did, through the brainwash that I'm going to say, well, you know, okay, let's go to the message of Mr. Radev, Ruman Radev. His message basically is that Crimea, which is occupied by the Russia, stolen from Ukraine, always was, in fact, a part of Russia. Uh, Americans, oh, that's why, that's why fictitious, that's why I said European Union fictitious. German politic, Grosse Deutsche Schweinerei, shithole, European Union. Mr. Radev, you cross the red line. You are not fit, in my opinion, to serve even as a cleaner in presidential Bulgarian presidential building. You are far from someone I would rate as a president with your views. You are corrupt. I think the German politic did just this. Um, it's a politic that when as far as 20 years planning news prior to events on how it's done. And I think you are just one of the clowns on that ugly picture I mentioned right now. I think you are corrupt as it gets. Americans talked about that it's justified that this here, this number here, it was not Americans only, it was British, it was a Buckingham Palace to be totally, totally, totally on dime, on dollar, on cents. When a country is occupied for 134 years or a territory, it can be, and in this case I was told it will be recognized that much for Buckingham Palace and Berlin. It will be recognized as a country, as a region that belongs, well, in this case, to aggressor, to the occupier, to the Russian aggressor, to the Russian occupier. Let's just put it this way. That's why I know, Mr. Radev, you are in a German pocket. You're not Bulgarian. You're not a Turk. You're not a Turkish. You're not a Turk. Mr. Radev believed that because there is a Turkish minority in Bulgaria, almost 10% of the population, close to 9%, look, 8.8%, .8%, you see it, that I'm going to take a stand and basically present one like maybe even a Turk that is pushing part of Ukraine into the hands of Russia in retaliation for Russian liberation of Bulgaria. This was under MK Ultra, the brainwash that Mr. Radev, Moscow, Belgrade, Berlin, Moscow, uh, London, Wash uh, Bellingham, and uh, of course, who else than Washington anticipated they're going to get from me. That's wrong. That's very, very wrong. I like Turkish state. I like Turkish people. In a little bit, I'm going to explain to you exactly why. And I am not going to say that Bulgaria was part of Turkey for 500 years. Like mentioned parties believe I'm going to go retaliatory and say, Ugh! Why don't you return Bulgaria under Turkey? It was part of Turkey, Ottoman Empire, for 500 years. Then this too, classified. That was like impulsive way. That's why they believe they're going to get a response from me. I'm not going to say that. I'm not going to say that. That's stupid. That's stupid. 
I'm not here to create division. I'm here exactly the opposite. I'm here to say hello to Bulgarian friends in Sofia, to Turkish people also involved at large in MK Ultra, and of course to my Ukrainians. Here's the deal about it all. Mr. Rumen Radev believe he's going to make a division between Ukraine and Turkey because the two have also what is known as a military cooperation with one another. I didn't say pact. The two do exchange military virtues. They do cooperate with one another uh, for their well-being, for their sake, basically. Mr. Ruman Radev, come on. Uh, let me lesson you about Bulgaria, Mr. Ruman Radev. It's not only Bulgaria and Serbia. The two were occupied for 500 years. In Slovenia, however, this is how far they managed to come, Ottomans. We had a big war with the Turks. They did not manage to occupy Slovenia. But at times they did, they came, and they liked to steal our children. Just as the case, maybe, probably, was also in Bulgaria and Ukraine, in Ukraine too. It, it was Turks in Ukraine too. Read about a Turkish-Ukrainian history. There is such a thing. They have, we have a rich history with the Turkey. And these children, they would steal, they would take them to Istanbul, they would take them to Turkey, and they would use them as uh, warriors. A little bigger, perfect warriors raised into the warriors through the military into the warriors and so they intermixed with Turks and so now in the Turkey you have a Slavic DNA just like you have a Turkish DNA also in part of Ukrainian population and you also have one in Slovenian too there is people with the name Turk in Slovenia. We have Turks here. Okay, I'm not saying the people that speak Turkish, but I'm saying we do have a people with the last name Turk. That's authentic Slovenian name. That's since the time when the Turks would come here through the Ottoman Empire. They, some of them, these soldiers, they like it here. They get some lady, whatever, and they marry it, and uh, there you have it. While in Bosnia, not too far from here, they expanded, they had their sultanates and so on, they had their people. They, we have the culture with the Turks, we have a common interests also with the Turks. Mr. Ruman Radev, come on. And you have, you just happen to have 9% of the people, population, says right there, that you have, it's of Turkish origins. Be nice now, come on, mister. Um, so, you have seen the latest post probably about the Turkish drone that was used in Donetsk, also occupied by the Russians, by the Russian aggressor. You see? Um, the terrorist was successfully destroyed by one of the Turkish drones. And so, Mr. Ruman Radov, uh, your intentions to talk about how, you know, provoke some kind of argument, a kind of a landed here on a dead end, I'm going to say. And I hope that my Ukrainian friends see this, and I cheer Bulgarian and Turkish, everybody, because I think we have a lot in common. I think we all have to work toward common goals, stability in the region, of which I believe, personally, Turkey is a very important part. Look at that. I mean, that's Istanbul right there, and then you have a Bulgaria. Bulgaria has a border with a Turkey. And Turkey has a lot to offer. Turkey is a knowledgeable country. It's a developed country. Um, trade, uh, common security. I don't actually see the problem. The problem
problem, the problem maker, the biggest problem maker on the Balkans, that's a Serbia, that's a Chetnik state that engaged in a genocide against several countries. And, you know, sir, to take stands like this, including myself, uh, Mr. Roman Rada, for you to take stands like this, that's like a really, really low. I would gesture Bulgaria to have this individual just disposed in a trash bin in a repository of the history and replaced one with a reasonable person that is more lean, that have more tendencies, open tendencies with minorities, that will be more friendly toward Turkish people, especially, you know, if they're 10% almost in Bulgaria, uh, you know, for the sake of good relations, friendship on the Balkans, and like I said, in a greater region, we don't need no wars, we don't want any of that, and uh, basically that's all there is in respect to this video. Uh, you can learn all yourself about Ukrainian Turkish history. There is Turks in Ukraine. There is such a thing. Uh, oh, shit, look at that. They're even in Donetsk, my God, in a part of uh, Ukraine that is occupied. Holy crap. See, uh, we got every reason to work together. We have a history. It doesn't matter even if that one is based on a war conflict, you know. But still, it's a common history we have, uh, and it's a common needs we have. We have to strive towards survival, which Russia is really endangering more than just Donetsk and, and, and uh, Crimea. You know, Russia is a problem for everybody, really. Uh, this is nice that you praise Russia for something like that, but through it all, Times changed. Russia became a hostile state for the Russian people in Russia alone. Uh, you can see what's happening with this coronavirus there. It's like on any other country in the world. And is actually, Mr. Ruman, be very careful with that kind of stuff because you don't know if you don't find yourself under the rug you know, we're talking about Bulgaria, your own country, just tomorrow, because, you know, this this politic we see right now is not good for anybody. You know, the politic that's good is actually the politic that supports safety, stability in the region. Uh, that's basically mutual cooperation, not this kind of stuff, uh, saying such a stupid, arrogant, really idiotic, really, 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 really idiotic stuff. No. 134 years of occupation uh, of certain region area just proves that after this occupation Crimea still wanted to be Ukraine no matter what okay and so it is since 1917 when the Soviet Union actually when Ukraine was under the Soviet Union Crimea's Crimeans felt like part of Ukraine. Tatars, Ukrainians deemed Ukraine to be their homeland. So this is a, such an arrogant, stupid statement. You know, never mind Bulgaria under 500 years, 500 years with the Serbia under Ottoman Empire. These are stupid things to say. There is a lot of countries in Europe that were occupied and, you know, go on with this kind of European, f fictitious, fictitious European Union politic. European Union does not exist. We only have a big German politic. This is a fictitious BS, bullshit, known as a European Union. It does not exist. This is a fictitious name for German politic. No, that's what it became. Here's not a way to go, Mr. Rumo. Rumen, uh, not for you, not for Bulgaria, 
uh, not for the Turkey, not for the Ukraine, uh, and, you know, like I said, even for the Russians and stuff, not for any other country in Europe. Bad, bad, bad. I do replace this politician as fast as possible. Thanks for watching this video. Till next time.